Greg Locke wants to tell us that the Bible is perfect, that it contains no errors of any kind, and anyone who says otherwise, well, he has nothing flattering to say about them. But is it so? Let's go find out. It's been a while since I looked at the rantings of Greg Locke, mostly because he's hardly worth my time. But this time, he has a short message spread while he's out driving, aimed at people who think that the Bible is anything but entirely inerrant. And as usual, he's just wrong. But what else is new? So let's take a look at his short rant and why everything he says is blind faith with absolutely no facts at all to back it up. And that just makes it another Wednesday, doesn't it? Hey guys, Pastor Greg Locke here. You ever heard someone say, the Bible is filled with contradictions? Yes, I have. I've been one of the people who said it. Because it's true. Why? I double dog dare you to ask them to show you one. And most of the time, they'll backpedal, get the porky pig syndrome, blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't know where they are. I just know that they are in there. Well, that's easy. How about Genesis 1, 3 through 5, where God created light, yet he didn't create the sun or other light sources until verses 14 through 19. Or, sticking with the Genesis creation accounts, Genesis 1, 11 through 12 and 26 through 27 says that trees were created before man, but Genesis 2, 4 through 9 says man was created before trees. And there are numerous examples in the Bible, such as Exodus 32, 14 and Numbers 14, 20 that say that God does not change his mind. Yet passages like Numbers 23, 19 through 20 and James 1, 17, which says he does. There are plenty of places in the Old Testament that say humans directly saw God, yet Exodus 33.20, among others, says that no one has ever seen God and lived. Exodus 3.1 says Jethro is the father-in-law of Moses, while Numbers 10.29 says Hobab is. The list goes on and on and on. There is no rational way to say that the Bible is inerrant. But of course, Greg here isn't rational, is he? They claim that there's like 10,000 mistakes in the Bible. Do you realize there's only 1,189 chapters? That means there would have to be well over one per page, one per chapter, and yet they still can't tell you where they are and what they are? I just did, at least a very small selection of them. I could go on. Now, I think the 10,000 mistakes is a vast overstatement, and that he just made it up. But there are tons of them that I could list that cannot be rationally refuted. But as I said, Greg and inerrantists like him aren't rational, are they? Now, are there some difficult realities in the Bible to understand? Yes, but no contradictions because the Bible interprets itself. It is a self-defining masterpiece. It is complete. It is inerrant. It is the very word of God. 791,328 words, all of them are from God. So you say. Now, how about you prove it? Oh, right. Proving things isn't what the religious are good at, are they? And at the end of this video, I'll explain exactly why these people hold to biblical inerrancy and why they think they can do away with all of the contradictions. And it's stupid, but that's no surprise, is it? The Bible does not contain the Word of God. It is 100% the Word of God, absolutely correct and accurate, 100%. Well, that's your claim. Of course, backing it up isn't even on your agenda, because you know you can't and you won't even try. But as I said, here's how the crazy apologists go about ensuring that the Bible is absolutely perfect, at least in their own eyes. Anytime a contradiction arises, and it doesn't really matter what kind of contradiction it is, but anytime anything that even looks contradictory comes along, if they can invent, out of whole cloth, any kind of ad hoc rationalization, any kind of mental gymnastics that will, in some bizarre way, make the contradiction disappear in their own tiny minds, 
then it wasn't really a contradiction in the first place. They don't have to prove that any of these claimed solutions are true, they just have to claim it. So let's take a look at one of these that appears in 1 Kings 4.26, which states that Solomon had 40,000 stalls for his horses, as opposed to 2 Chronicles 9.25, which says that he had 4,000 stalls. Now, one possible explanation proposed by apologists is a simple copyist error, which I admit is possible, but if copyist errors can creep into the Bible, then the Bible is no longer inerrant, is it? They don't think about that. Other apologists invented a silly explanation where Solomon had large stalls that held 10 horses, thus 4,000 stalls are equivalent to 40,000. Where did they get this? Well, they made it up. No verification at all. It's just in their own tiny little minds. Finally, one apologist says that the 4,000 number was the number of souls at the beginning of Solomon's 40-year reign, and the 40,000 is the number at the end. Where did this idea come from? Well, certainly not the Bible. It's all just made up. So long as they can just come up with any explanation, no matter how far-fetched, they figure they've solved the riddle because they can't accept that the Bible has errors, even when it demonstrably does. And this is not how rational people operate. Rational people do not cling tenaciously to an absurd idea and invent farcical explanations for things that appear in black and white right on the page. If the Bible is inerrant, it wouldn't have all of these so-called apparent contradictions. It would be consistent throughout. That it's not bothers the inerrantists, and therefore they have to make things up to maintain their ridiculous beliefs. And Greg Locke is no different. The belief that the Bible is inerrant is more important to him than the facts. And not only is that sad, it shows that theists are complete idiots.